Hey folks, welcome to Military Forces Unleashed. That sound, that high-pitched whine, is the new soundtrack of modern war. It's the sound of a $500 drone about to take out a multi-million dollar tank. It's the sound of an unsolvable math problem for generals. How do you stop a threat that costs less than a used car without going bankrupt in the process? Now, what if I told you the answer exists? a weapon that fires at the speed of light for pennies a shot. It's not science fiction. It's real, it's tested, and our allies are lining up to buy it. But the most powerful military on Earth? They've looked at this elegant solution and decided to spend billions developing their own more complex and long-delayed version instead. This isn't just about a laser. It's about why the simplest answer is so often the one the Pentagon refuses to accept a $400,000 missile to destroy a $500 drone. This is the bankrupting math at the heart of modern warfare. It's an unsustainable economic reality that is forcing militaries to make impossible choices on the battlefield. But a proven off-the-shelf solution exists. A laser weapon built by our Australian allies designed specifically for this fight. It neutralizes drones for pennies per shot. It's not a concept. It's available right now, and our allies are already buying it. So the real story here isn't the technology. It's the decision. The decision by the U.S. Army to effectively ignore this ready solution and instead spend years and billions of dollars developing its own far more complex system from the ground up. This isn't a logical choice, it's a political one, and it's driven by money, pride, and a system that punishes simplicity. For decades, air superiority meant having better fighter jets, but Ukraine changed the game forever. The sky is no longer owned by the fastest jet, it's contested by swarms of cheap, expendable drones. They guide artillery, hunt tanks, and strike deep behind the lines, Suddenly, multi-million dollar air defense systems were firing wildly expensive missiles to shoot down glorified model airplanes. The cost-exchange ratio was a nightmare. Militaries were literally losing the economic war. This is the problem the Australian defense company Electro-Optic Systems, or EOS, set out to solve. They're not a giant like Lockheed or Boeing. They're specialists. They looked at the problem not as how do we build the most powerful laser possible, but what is the minimum effective tool we need to kill a drone, and how can we make it reliable and affordable? The result was Apollo, a directed energy system. It's essentially a high-precision gimbal, advanced optics, and a laser beam, all integrated to track and cook the sensitive electronics of a drone, or even melt its structure, causing it to fall out of the sky. No multi-million dollar missile, just a beam of light. The Netherlands saw the genius in this simplicity. They became the first international customer, ordering systems to protect their military bases. Now, NATO members, Middle Eastern nations, and East Asian countries are all showing serious interest. The world sees a practical solution to an urgent problem. So, you have a proven export-ready drone killer made by a close ally. The U.S. Army needs exactly that, right? You'd think they'd be the first in line. Instead, the Army is committed to its own program, the DEM Shorad, a 50-kilowatt laser mounted on an eight-wheeled striker combat vehicle. Let's break this down. Cost. The exact unit cost of Apollo is secret, but it's designed for a competitive export market. The DEM Shorad program? The initial contract for just four prototypes was over $200 million, and that's just the start. Availability. EOS is selling Apollo to customers now. The DEM Shorad, after years of development and delays, just delivered its first platoon of four vehicles for operational testing in 2023. It's years away from widespread deployment. Complexity. The Apollo is often shown as a fixed or relocatable system, perfect for base defense. The DEM Shorad adds the immense complexity of integrating a high-power laser and its massive cooling and power systems onto a moving combat vehicle. This creates a thousand new points of failure. 
This is the classic not-invented-here syndrome amplified by the immense gravity of the U.S. military-industrial complex. Why buy a simple, effective Toyota from an ally when you can spend five times more and wait 10 years for a custom-built gold-plated Hummer from a domestic contractor? The system isn't designed to find the best solution. It's designed to keep the money flowing within its own ecosystem. So we have to ask the hard question, who really wins here? It's not the soldier in the field who needs protection from drones today, not in 2030. It's not the taxpayer whose money is being burned on decade-long development cycles for technology that already exists elsewhere. A 2023 report from the Government Accountability Office, the GAO, highlighted significant reliability challenges with the DEM Shorad prototypes. The cooling systems, the power generation, all the complex parts added to make it a made-in-America superweapon are the very things that are failing. Meanwhile, the logic from EOS was simple. Use a more modest laser power, but perfect the tracking and targeting. They solved 80% of the problem with 20% of the complexity. The Pentagon, on the other hand, seems trapped in a culture of exquisite solutions. It must be the biggest, the most powerful, the most technologically advanced, even if that makes it unaffordable, unreliable, and late to the fight. This isn't about strategy. It's about industrial policy disguised as defense. It's about ensuring multi-billion dollar contracts go to the right congressional districts. Is this about stopping drones? Or is it about maintaining a system where the process of building the weapon is more important than the weapon itself? And here's the ultimate irony. While the US pursues its complex, go-it-alone approach, its allies are creating a new standard of practical and interoperable defense. The Dutch will have field-tested laser systems protecting their forces while the U.S. is still writing the user manuals for its prototypes. A future coalition battlefield might see allies using a common, effective Australian system while American forces rely on their own unique and potentially less reliable equipment. The United States preaches interoperability to NATO. It tells allies to modernize and buy compatible gear. But here, it's the U.S. that's breaking from the pack, isolating itself with its own bespoke technology. The lesson from Ukraine is speed and adaptation. The lesson from the global defense market is that good ideas can come from anywhere. The question is, is the Pentagon capable of learning? The best weapon isn't the one with the biggest budget or the most impressive spec sheet. It's the one that's there on the battlefield when you need it. It's the one that works. And sometimes the hardest thing for a superpower to admit is that someone else, an ally, a smaller company, built it better, smarter, and faster. The story of the Apollo laser and the DEM Shorad isn't just about technology. It's a perfect snapshot of a system struggling under its own weight. A system where the pursuit of theoretical perfection gets in the way of practical readiness. So, if you've ever looked at a massive defense program and thought, there has to be a simpler way, you're not crazy. You're just seeing the quiet failure hiding behind the curtain of overwhelming force. If this made you rethink what military strength really means, smash that like button, subscribe for more critical analysis, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next investigation. And let us know in the comments, what's the next broken decision or ignored technology we should expose?